Hello! So today we're going to talk about George. Who's George, you might ask? Is it the plant behind me? Is it Sophie's new boyfriend? Maybe. George is actually our autopilot, and lately George has been acting up a bit. Sometimes doing big 360s, other times taking us off in the wrong direction, and every now and then completely disconnecting. When running a boat shorthanded, like Sophie and I do, having a good, reliable autopilot is really critical for the safe operation of the boat. It gives us the opportunity to walk away from the helm and do things like cooking, cleaning, changing the sails, and even getting a bit of rest. Without the autopilot, one of us would have to be on the helm, and the other one would have to be supporting the person on the helm the entire time. Over a 24 hour period, this would be very tiring and exhausting. So having George on board is like our third crew member. He's really important with the safe operation of the boat on their long passages. So with our big Atlantic crossing coming, we've decided to give George a bit of an upgrade. So we have invested in a new Raymarine Evolution autopilot. We thought this would be a good time to talk to you guys about what an autopilot is and how does it work. So in this video, we're going to do just that. We're going to talk to you about what an autopilot is, how does it work, and we're going to talk to you about how to select a new autopilot if you're interested in getting a new one for your boat. Before we start, it's worth noting that there's different types of autopilots, so we'll talk about that now. The first being hired crew. Hired crew can helm the boat, but they can also do other things like cooking, cleaning, changing the sails, telling you new stories, and even telling you if there's a fish on the line. The hired crew can help make decisions along the way as well. The downside is they take a bit of space. You gotta feed them, and if you pick up the wrong one, it may make for an unenjoyable passage. The second type of autopilot is a more classic type option, which is called a wind vane. A wind vane is a mechanical device which is attached to the back or the transom of the boat and has a big vane that sticks up into the air. The operator then sets that wind vane to a particular wind angle and that then drives a rudder that's in the water. These devices are great because they require no electricity, they're mechanical, so if something breaks, it's very simple to repair. The downside is they are bulky and they take up a lot of space on the back of the boat and you can't track a particular magnetic heading or course that you might have programmed into your chart plotter. The third type of autopilot is an electronic autopilot, and that's what we're installing aboard Polar Seal. So how exactly does an autopilot work? You can think of an autopilot as a person standing at the helm of the boat. We're gonna use our eyes, our brain, and our hands in order to control the movement of the boat. For our eyes, we're typically looking at the magnetic compass to steer towards a specific magnetic heading or we're looking at the wind instruments to steer towards a specific wind angle. We then take that information from our eyes and it goes into our brain where it's processed and our brain then sends signals to our hands which then control the helm of the boat through the movement of the wheel or the tiller. And that's exactly how an electronic autopilot works. The autopilot's eyes are really what separates older autopilots from newer autopilots. Onboard Polar Seal, our old Raymarine autopilot used a thing called a flux gate compass in order to see what magnetic heading it was steering towards. The flux gate compass is really just a fancy compass that follows the magnetic field lines of the earth in order for the boat to steer a certain way. The problem with these is they're very sensitive to other metallic objects that might be around it, so placement of them is very hard. If you put a coat hanger or a tin of food close by, it may throw off the magnetic heading and so you're traveling the wrong direction. In addition to that, the autopilot can also be connected to the wind instruments in order to follow a specific wind angle, or it can be connected to the chart plotter in order to follow a track or a course which you set out in the chart plotter. In addition to being connected to the wind instruments and the chart plotter, the new Evolution Autopilot also comes with this cool spaceship looking EV-1 sensor. So in addition to providing magnetic heading information, this thing also will give us information with respect to yaw, pitch, and roll. So now, instead of us just using our eyes, we're now using our eyes and our internal ears to give the autopilot information on how the heading is and how the boat is behaving in the waves. This would be the equivalent of a helmsman taking over while sailing downwind. Many times a helmsman can sail downwind better than what the autopilot can do. And this is because the flux gate compass really only gives us information on how the boat is pointed or which way the boat is pointed. This EV1 sensor will now give us information on which way the boat is pointed, but also the yaw, pitch and roll, which allows the autopilot to sense or get ahead of the wave movements and provide us a more comfortable ride. Another benefit of this EV1 sensor is that, as opposed to the flux gate, 
it's not as susceptible to magnetic interference. So we can essentially put this EV1 sensor wherever we want, which makes installation a little easier and is a little bit bigger win for me. So where are we gonna install it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna install it under the chart table. That's to come later. Okay, so now we have all the information from our eyes and internal ears. We now have to have a way to process it, and that's through the autopilot's brain. This is just like a helms person's eyes going to their own brain and then providing some type of input to the boat. Some of us do this better than others. In our autopilot system, we have two units that do this. The first is called the actuator control unit. And just like the brain, it's filled with a bunch of programming, which is way outside the scope of this video. But what you need to know is that all of our eye and internal ears, like the EV1 sensors, are connected to this. It's then processed and sent out to control the boat. This though has a limitation as it doesn't always know what we as humans want to do. Now the range of decisions that an autopilot can make are not as great as what a human can make. So we need to have a way to tell the autopilot what we want it to do. And for that, we use a thing called a control head. This is our interface between our brains and our autopilot's brain. So for this, we can tell it to turn on, turn it off, tell it to follow a specific course, a specific wind angle, or even change heading slightly. From all of that, the computer will then process the information and then send a signal to the drive unit, which controls a boat. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. Finally, after the internal ears, the eyes, and the brain, we need to have a way to control the boat. And this would be the equivalent of our arms on the helm of the boat. For this, we need to understand how boats are steered. And typically this is done two ways. The first is through a tiller. And this would be through a pole that's connected directly to the rudder off the back of the boat. The other way would be through a wheel, which may be connected through a series of cables, linkages, or hydraulic lines to control the rudder on the boat. The arms of the autopilot are called the drive unit. This drive unit is connected to the course computer, which sends a signal to the drive unit, which is then connected to the rudder and provides input to the boat based on what you told the autopilot to do through the control head. The bigger the boat, the more powerful the drive unit needs to be. So on a boat with a tiller, you may have a drive unit that's connected directly to a tiller. On a little bit bigger boat with a wheel, the drive unit may be connected directly to the wheel, so it physically turns the wheel. On Polar Seal, our drive unit is actually connected underneath the boat and directly to the rudder stock. And this is what our drive unit looks like, this big thing. So, these wires provide power to the unit, but it's also connected directly to our control computer or the brains of the autopilot. From that, it sends a signal which moves this arm in order to move the rudder. And we're gonna to try to demonstrate. So Vanna, Vanna's giving me the rudder stock, which then is connected by some arm. And then as this moves, it's Whoa. going to turn the rudder and then going back, it's going to turn Ooh. it the other way. And that's how that works. Let's do it again. Whoa. Magic. Now this is fine for a boat the size of Polar Seal, but on even bigger boats or boats with complex hydraulic systems, the drive unit will actually be hydraulic in order to provide enough power to move the boat. One plus of having a unit like this that people don't normally think about is that if the control cables on board Polar Seal were to break, so we can't use the helm, this is actually connected directly to the rudder stock, so we would actually be able to steer the boat even if we lost steering in our wheels kind of an added safety benefit, which is pretty cool. So what should you think about when you're trying to find an autopilot for your boat? You really should consider the type of boat you have, the displacement you have, and the type of steering mechanism you have. Many manufacturers of autopilots recommend that you pick an autopilot drive unit that is rated for 20% higher displacement than what your boat is rated for. So on board Polar Seal, we use this type one drive unit and it's worked pretty well for us throughout the last three seasons of sailing. You also need to check the type of drive unit that would be most appropriate for your boat. This would either be a linear unit, a rotary unit, 
or a hydraulic unit, but we just talked about those. The last big concern for autopilots on cruising boats is how much power they take. Because they're an electric autopilot, we're gonna be using power from the batteries. So what Sophie and I have noticed with our autopilots while underway, in calm seas, the autopilot is using maybe half of what it's rated for in terms of power. But as the sea states get bigger and the autopilot starts working harder, expect that the autopilot will use more and more power. This new Raymarine Evolution autopilot uses a maximum of 15 amps. So this is something to plan for when you're putting in a new autopilot to make sure your battery bank is appropriately sized. Well guys, that's it. That's how an autopilot works. I hope you got something out of this and learned a little something along the way. If you'd like to see how we install this autopilot on board Polar Seal, please let us know in the comment section below and we'll see if we can't put together a cool video on how we do the install. If you got something out of this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and if you like this series, consider subscribing. But for now, that's it. Bye from George. Hey do. Auf Wiedersehen. Bon voyage. Bye bye.